So I would like to introduce now Naifa. So Naifa is a law professor in the Haifa University and she is the director of the Center for Law and Technology in Haifa University in, in Israel. So please. So it's a great pleasure uh, to be here. Um, I'm, um, I've been working on um, limitations and exceptions on, on fair use for the past couple of years, uh, focusing on um, access to education and educational use, uh, open access to scholarly materials. And uh, the past year has been a, a very exciting year, I guess, in this uh, area, bringing me to the, uh, even to uh, consider uh, the question of whether we are uh, reaching a turning point. So one of the things that I'd like uh, to do today is to talk briefly about some of the developments related to um, access to educational materials and educational views. Um, um, break the bad news, in my opinion, that uh, we are still uh, uh, far from uh, reaching that uh, turning point. Uh, in, in educational use and suggest, share with you some thoughts about how I believe we should go, move forward with this. Uh, so in terms of achievements, uh, I think that there are three major achievements that sh uh, should be pointed out among the many. Uh, one in uh, d a doctrinal development, uh, making creating more room for educational use. Another is more theoretical, uh, creating the ground for uh, rephrasing copyright objectives so they can include more uh, uses, uh, educational uses, and then uh, uh, one uh, major uh, development in politics. So in terms of the doctrine, uh, looking into uh, uh, the US uh, uh, decisions for a while, uh, uh, we didn't have, and I think that is true worldwide, we didn't have any major decisions related to educational use, uh, and even in the uh, most uh, liberal uh, regime, uh, the fair use regime, there are very few uh, decisions and very narrow interpretation, if any, of educational use, whereas in the past year, uh, we had uh, a major uh, decision related to the lawsuit of um, uh, Pub major publishers against uh, University of uh, State University of Georgia, uh, with respect to the use of educational uh, educational use of scholarly materials on e-reserve, the courts held that uh, um, decidedly um, small excerpts of scholarly works uh, could be considered fair use. Another major decision is the Hathi Trust uh, decision, uh, again this year, a uh, spin-off of the Google uh, uh, book litigation, where the court actually uh, considered the uh, um, uh, uh, massive copying of uh, books uh, for indexing and for research and study purposes uh, as uh, fair use. And meantime, in uh, Canada, uh, the Supreme Court was looking actually at a, a more narrow uh, uh, limitation to copyright that is fair dealing, which is at time only applied to the uh, pr uh, private study uh, and the use of uh, copyrighted material for pri private study. And the, uh, the court held that um, uh, teachers that are making available uh, materials to students in order to enable them to practice uh, their um, uh, fair dealing right for private studying uh, are actually uh, covered by uh, the fair dealing. They're foreseeing the symbiotic relationship between teacher, instructor, instructors, and researchers and the users that they're serving. But Supreme Court of Canada actually made a breakthrough, in my opinion, uh, related to uh, the rephrasing of the objectives of copyright uh, with respect to, uh, and, and, and thereby enabling us to define the role of users, users of materials within the framework of, of copyright law. So rather than looking at copyright law as the, as the legal regimes that should balance the, the rights of authors for just reward, on the one hand, and the public interest on the other hand, looking at copyright law as a regime that should encourage uh, the creation and dissemination of cultural works. 
Uh, within this framework, you can look at users as participants and, and taking an active role in disseminating knowledge and, and thereby interpreting, uh, providing this interpretation, the Canadian uh, court uh, accorded uh, the legal status of a right to the user's privileges. So looking at copyright law, not and only and pro as promoting the rights of authors, but also the actual rights of users. Um, in terms of politics, uh, we, 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 we heard a great deal about the SOPA PIPA debate and about the ACT uh, 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 protests. And, and I think uh, uh, our, you know, in the last presentation we heard about inspiration. And this has inspiring, was inspiring also for the scholarly community community and you can and and we can look as an, as the, at the example of the boycott of scientists against Alsevier uh, starting in the United States uh, after Alsevier was supporting uh, legislation uh, in the American Congress uh, for uh, uh, preventing the release of um, scientific data that was the outcome of um, um, uh, research funded by the federal government. So, um, just to stress one point related to the politics uh, is uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, um, the uh, access to knowledge movement managed to turn a copyright issue which uh, was related to experts into a political agenda is really significant and especially important in the uh, educational sphere and that is because copyright to, uh, a lot of, uh, of, to, to a large extent depends on compliance by students, by instructors, by institutions, by librarians and once uh, uh, all these players internalize the, um, you know, that, you know, some of the issues that are at stake and some of the debates, um, uh, I think that um, that, that turns out uh, to be very effective in the way the, the, the rights uh, of both authors and users are being implemented in this sphere. So these are the good news and the bad news is that we are facing new challenges that are not addressed by these great developments. Um, and, and these new challenges, um, basically relate to the major shift that we see uh, from, um, the, um, from public law into private ordering. So that has to do with a shift to, you know, an emerging um, um, regime in which we see more restrictions in uh, design and licenses and the different, uh, the, the new ways in which knowledge is being distributed by new intermediaries. So if I look at books that are actually the major carriers of knowledge and uh, especially significant for the education, in the educational context, um, the, um, the transformation, you know, of, uh, that we see in books, the shift from printed books to digital books actually are turning uh, books from a commodity uh, into a service. This requires us to use um, all these reading devices, not always uh, interoperable. Um, this is um, partly has to do with some DRM restrictions, right, uh, due to right management and uh, that uh, apply to the uh, content that is uh, books that are delivered in the ebook format, but not necessarily. This is not simply a DRM issue. It also has to do with the fact that when you read uh, using your uh, reading device, the e-reader, the iPad, the Kindle, uh, you're reading the book, but the book is also reading you, or the device is reading you. A lot of information is reported on the, your reading habits, on your comments, on the things that you've been uh, reading to those who are supplying the service, the content. Uh, um, users no longer have control over the um, collection of books that they supposedly own. So uh, we are all accustomed to this when we look at uh, the music that we consume uh, on our uh, iPods, sometimes on iPads. Um, uh, some of them are also delivered as services, but think of libraries that no longer control the uh, collections. Uh, that, the, that they have. So this is a, an example of books, you know, the book 1984 was deleted by uh, Amazon in, um, 
2009 from the Kindle devices of purchases that uh, already paid for it. Uh, and um, there are uh, more recent, uh, sometimes uh, recent examples of uh, where uh, suppliers can change sometimes retroactively the terms of use and then uh, uh, block access to some of the books that were already downloaded and made available. So restrictions by the platform is one issue, the restrictions by licenses in, is another issue. Uh, we are accustomed to some of the, um, the type of restrictions that you see in the first block, that is restrictions uh, uh, on licenses in the end user license agreement uh, that uh, we are accustomed to from the software industry. Uh, but think about this, the same type of restrictions in the book industry uh, where we look at uh, publishers such as Harper and Collins limiting uh, the access to uh, e-books for uh, 20, 26 um, loans, um, so the library cannot rely on perpetual loaning, but lending, but um, um, control, you know, ability to lend the book uh, is limited to uh, 26 times. Uh, and the extreme example of Amazon no longer uh, selling at all to uh, libraries. And so when we focus our efforts in limitations and exceptions on libraries and exceptions uh, for libraries, we have to take into account the fact that a lot of this market is circumventing libraries and libraries can no longer in many cases safeguard public access to knowledge. Uh, final point here uh, to, keep, to bear in mind is that a lot of the new publishers are actually controlling not just the access to books, uh, but are becoming publishers themselves, controlling the content. And of course, as we know, Google, Amazon, the apples of the world also have a great control over the end users and, the, and a lot of information about uh, what end users want and have. What we should bear in mind is the increasing partnership between between uh, these platforms and right holders uh, related to uh, price. Uh, um, related to enforcement, I think a major concern is the uh, Google announcement that it would uh, block uh, websites uh, that are, you know, that received a lot of uh, uh, notice and takedown or content included in that, in those websites uh, received high degree of uh, um, uh, uh, notices for infringement um, and, and of course automated uh, enforce enforcement and uh, content ID systems that automatically block uh, 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 access to content upon uh, um, receiving a notice and not necessarily receiving a proof of any copyright ownership. So in term, in a way of uh, concluding, uh, I guess when a lot of pieces are moving and, we're in, and we look at a tremendous change both in technology and business models uh, in, 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 in all field, but especially uh, in the educational context, um, it's really important to stick um, uh, to open norms that would enable us to um, address these dynamic changes. It's also important to shift our... Um, uh, perspective from the defensive perspective of limitation and um, exceptions that actually takes uh, copyright as a baseline uh, and can only protect against an, uh, an abuse or, or an attempt to um, um, ex ex expand rights beyond those uh, uh, listed uh, by uh, the law. Um, into a more proactive uh, approach. And here, if we, if we look at what is necessary for educational purposes, if we want to guarantee in this environment that I've been trying to describe some freedom to use a work without a license, but also to use a work without surveillance and without uh, any limits on uh, the ability to explore and uh, innovate, uh, we need to move to a more uh, proactive approach uh, that talks about uh, not limitation and exceptions but about users' rights. And here it is important to articulate uh, what 
would be the legal status of such rights, uh, to what extent and in what circumstances they would enable us to limit uh, some restrictions in end user license agreements, but also to impose some liabilities and uh, through regulation on suppliers of devices or uh, online uh, platforms that are providing us with access to all this important content. The focus on, on users' rights is, is you know, uh, could give us some advantage over uh, free speech focus or privacy focus because uh, especially from uh, in the educational sectors it enables us to focus on uh, what's important for promoting um, the goals of copyright that is uh, looking at what is necessary to enable users to participate in generating culture and um, and and focusing on what enable uh, users to become um, uh, future authors. Thank you.